Russell, can we start with uh, the, the guys who obviously played in that brutal playoff game between Poland and Wales and both came off during the game and Brooksy on late. What's the situation with them and how are they? Uh, Yanni took a kick in the first game um, before the Wales one and uh, managed to get through the game as long as he could. Um, he wasn't uh, feeling great either in terms of uh, a bit of a virus, which is what Brooksy had as well. Um, so both been assessed yesterday, both look reasonably good, um, but we have a big weekend, so we'll have to make sure that we are completely right, but they're both available tomorrow and they'll both be involved. Um, so uh, Brooksy, I don't know, um, I feel like, I think he feels he could have uh, played on a bit, but also understands he wasn't at his, uh, feeling his very best. He'd been ill for three or four days in bed. Um, so yeah, I think um, luckily for us, both are ready to be involved tomorrow. So um, when we, you see them both coming off the other night and Reese was at the game and texted us to say they're both coming off and it was, you know, um, yeah. So uh, thankfully it was um, fairly positive news. And of course, you had this three weeks. Um, we were hoping you'd get, be able to get players fit and, you know, Knox repaired yeah. and Walker Peters and Fraser back in the business. How, how is the rest of the squad? Yeah, everyone's good. Everyone's in a good place. So um, Juan is back training with a group uh, on the whole as well. We have to manage what he does, but um, he's back in. Carl's look great. Uh, Wee Man and Carl look like they've never been away. So they are ready now for the running, which is fantastic. Um, and then Big Ross Stewart is, is back on the grass now doing doing light work and will slowly be re reintegrated to the group. Um, but as I've said before, not to expect too much from that, but it's great to have him back on the grass and great to have him in and around the squad, which is uh, really nice. And have you got what you wanted out of the, the break? I mean, sometimes you don't want three weeks off, but actually if you're going to have them, you, you want to make the most of them. Yeah, so they've done some brilliant work. So before even before the internationals went away, um, we did a lot of work and they attacked it brilliantly. Um, and then the guys that have been here still whilst the international players are away have been fantastic. Been really, actually really um, enjoyed spending quite a bit of time on the training pitch with them. And then they've had a bit of a balance as well, a bit of rest, a bit of recovery. Some have gone away and done their thing for a few days. Some have just spent time with the family. Adam Armstrong's had a little baby. Well, he hasn't. His partner's had a little baby. So a huge congratulations to them, um, which is really nice. So, yeah, it's been, um, it's been a good balance, I think, between working really hard and then a bit of rest as well. Is there a bit of unknown do you think for managers after a, a break like this how, how hard is it to assess the form of your players when you're going into two games in four days and of course Middlesbrough have had two weeks off as well which could mm -hmm. benefit or not their decent form they had before the break so how hard is it when you're a manager to put it all back together again like it was I th well I think we've just um, we've looked at what we feel we need to prioritise after the last few games I think we played some brilliant football we conceded too many goals so um I think we just look at that, it's the same process. And then obviously there's no game to then get some evidence of the work you're doing. Um, but we just worked really hard on a few things, um, keep reinforcing some brilliant stuff they're doing, the players, and then the rest will take care of itself. And also try and keep the feeling that we have in the group. And it's really difficult when a lot of players away and, and stuff like that, but um, they have a brilliant feeling with each other and the way they work and, and the spirit. So we have to try and keep that. It's gonna be a really interesting and busy five weeks. Um, and I think everyone is really, really excited about it. Yeah, I was going to say, that feeling is key, isn't it? It's only symbolic, but the fact that there's like 10 games to go, sort of, here we go, month, five weeks, bang, is, is that quite nice in a way that it focuses everybody anywhere? Yeah, I think um, you, get so, you get so close to the end goal and, and what you want to achieve, and that and the, every game you tick off now, you get closer and closer to it. So crazy things will happen in the league, for sure. There'll be some strange games, weird results. We need to make sure we take care of ourselves. I think the beautiful thing for us is we've been written off by everyone. Um, we're averaging two points a game and been completely written off, which is uh, which is really interesting and shows how well the other three teams that are involved in it have done. Um, so, yeah, we just concentrate on ourselves. On the oldest cliche ever, but we will take each game as it comes, and we have a tough one on uh, tomorrow against Middlesbrough, who are in good form, and especially away from home. Uh, a manager I respect a lot and like a lot. I like the way they play. Um, and they've actually been unlucky. If you look at all the data that backs up their performances, they should, probably should be a bit higher up and have a few more points than they do have. Um, so interesting game, tough game. They all are in this league, but I'm really, really excited about the challenge. And we have to start this next five weeks off. After a little bit of an extended break, we have to start off well um, in terms of performance and, and then hope that leads to a result because it's a big, big weekend for us. Just uh, on Middlesbrough, 
their away record is better than their home record. Is there a particular reason why you think they're suited to that, that you've spotted, that you think, well, that's why they're a threat away from home? No, honestly, I, I, um, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you. They've changed shape recently and it's worked for them really well, but I think they're quite flexible. Um, but no, I think you'd have to ask Michael that. I don't, I don't know why that, why that is or the feeling they have away from home and compared to home, I just don't know. But when you watch the games, they're pretty consistent in terms of how they perform and what they do. Um, so I don't think there's a correlation between difference in performance or setup really, um, but they've been they've been good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the 10, 30, and a half Last one, question. Uh, you've sort of said a little bit about it, it's about them there, but you are in this unique position where you've, you've not had a couple of games, so you are points behind. But does that give you a chance just to, like I said, just focus on yourself and just try and get the points back up? Yeah, honestly, I've not looked at the league table for a long time, um, and I won't. It's pretty pointless. We'll just concentrate on what we're doing, and um, it's because of the delay and the backlog of games and all that stuff, I think it'll only become really important and relevant and actual real very close to the end of the season for us. So, um, yeah, we have 30 points to play for and we will try and get as many as we possibly can. Um, we'll try and get 30. So um, after that, we'll see whatever we end up with, where it takes us. Like I said, it's unique to have average two points a game at this stage of the season, not being the top two. I think it's just unheard of, really. So. But it's the strength of the competition this year in the league, and um, honestly, it's going to be really exciting. We have the three teams to play all the way from home. They don't get any bigger than that, and if you can't get excited about that and about that challenge, then I think we're all in the wrong, uh, all wrong business. But um, yeah, we have a game to attack tomorrow first. Um, that's the most important one, and then um, we'll get ready for whatever comes next. It felt like the break came at a nice little time, but is it the same as? Perhaps ask the media where you, you have a little bit of time off and you think, actually, I want to get back to it now and the players are raring to go. Yeah, and I think that happens in the off-season, in, in the summer. Um, happens during every international break. It's like, OK, nice for a couple of days and then you just want the players back and you want to get some work in. And, uh, but I do think we've had a good balance of work and, and, um, and rest. So I'm really pleased with the work we've got in. Um, now we have to put it over the white line when it really, really matters. And uh, I think we have really good options. I think when I look at the players that are not I haven't been in the team recently and how hungry they are, how ready they look physically, mentally. Um, I think we're in a really good place as a group and we can be really flexible and adaptable. Um, I think it's going to be really important. I think it's going to be really important. I think the last 10 games are going to require maybe different things um, at different times and different scenarios in games. So we've been trying to think ahead of as many of them as we possibly can um, and prepare the, prepare the guys for what's to come. You may have said I may have missed the apologies now, but not to put any pressure on uh, Juan Larios, but we've seen his back in training um, from video clips on social media. Is he going to be available for selection soon, or is it a case of just... No, I don't, I don't think we can... Um, he's not even played a no. 21s game or whatever, so I think the, the best case scenario for Juan is um, to train for a consolidated period with us. He's still not fully training, so he comes in for bits and then has to dip out of bits and just have to really manage him for his own sake and for, for a long term, because... Um, he can be a really incredible player for this club over a long period of time. He's had a really difficult 18 months. Um, so to expect too much from too soon is a bit, would be a bit crazy, really. So he's, he's super talented, has a, a fantastic attitude. Um, he's really getting up to speed again. But I think the best, best hope for us is that we can get him a couple of 21s games before the end of the season. He gets back into a rhythm of training all the time and playing and then can carry that on over the summer and be really ready for uh, a big pre-season for him, I think. Awesome. Thank you, Russell. You know when you've got players going away, I think seven out of the starting lineup have gone away. Is there kind of a, a desire to maybe start some of the players who've stayed back or kind of how is that balance? Yeah, I think um, it's really easy to get caught up in watching the guys training so well here and think, oh, they need to play. But you also can't be punished for being an international player and being really good and going away. And, and those guys were in the team for a reason, right? So, um, and then they come back, they all have different um, feelings about their time away. Some will be very frustrated they haven't played as much as they wanted um, some have played every minute um, so you have to take all of that into account I think and again it'll just be conversations with the guys we spoke to a majority of them yesterday um, and then one or two back in today who haven't been back until late last night so catch up with them see how they feel um, and then we'll pick the best team that we feel will win the game tomorrow um, and then it'll be the same for Monday that might change it might not I don't know so um, but it is it's exciting and nice for us when you watch the guys back here training with so much hunger and so much desire and so much intensity and, and a lot of quality as well. So, of course, that then comes into you, your thinking. But, um, yeah, a lot of discussion and hopefully we'll pick the right team.
Ryan Manning joined up with Ireland late. How was he? Because I think he had a bit of illness injury. Yeah, he, I, he had uh, an operation on his nose because he broke his nose against Birmingham. Um, so then the plan was to keep him back here and let it settle and keep him really fit. And then we were um, informed that they really wanted him to go. And he was, you know, told he, they wanted him to go and play and then he didn't play a minute. So it's not, he's really not ideal for Ryan or for us. So um, it's a bit frustrating, but is their, is their prerogative. And um, the best thing would have been for him to get, come here, recover, train really, really brilliantly. If he'd have gone there and played some minutes, it would have been fantastic for him, another cap. But he's gone and not played a minute. So... Um, yeah, it's a tough one for Ryan, probably. This is a question I think you'll probably get asked quite a lot as we sort of get to the end of the season, but I think we'll just ask it now well, before we get into the run of games. Stu Armstrong and Che Adams still out of contact in the summer. Has it been a chance to have a conversation with them international break or is that going to be maybe after the game? No, played? I think they're both really comfortable. There's been a lot of conversation between the start of the season to January and then sort of left at the end of January that both are really comfortable doing what they're doing. They're giving everything they've got. Um, and as long as they do that for us, there's, there's no problem at all. Um, so I really respect their position. I think they respect the club's position as well. And as long as there is that that relationship and that understanding of each other, then um, we, we'll be more than fine. And they've both been outstanding for us, especially recently what they've contributed on the pitch. So they have 10 games to help get us back to the Premier League and be a part of that. I'm sure that'll be their, their biggest desire is to get back to the Premier League and, and stay at the club in the Premier League. Or they help us get to, back to the Premier League and then they have lots of suitors. Um, so they have 10 games to really have a big impact on their futures as well. And I think that's a huge, huge motivation. They're not taking it safe because we have so much to play for. I think if you're a mid-table team at this point and you have guys running out of contract, there's always a concern that maybe they don't give everything they've got, um, trying to avoid injury and stuff. But these two, the prize is too big um, for us as a club, for them as individuals. So I've got no... No concern about that. And I think actually if we end up started talking now and discussing things, I actually think it probably muddies the waters a little bit. And um, so, yeah, I think we're all happy to wait until the end of the season. And uh, hopefully at that point, everyone's really happy of what we've we've achieved. That's Russell. Russell just wants to do 50 caps for Scotland now. So yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I text him and um, he joked about not being a great game to get it in, but um, amazing achievement, 50 caps. I think I played with him in his first one, so for him to go and do that is uh, is really amazing. I'm really proud of him. He should be proud of himself, um, and us as a club should be really proud of him because a lot of them caps have come whilst he's, whilst he's here. So incredibly talented footballer, really intelligent guy, good, good, really good person, Stewie. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really, really happy for him, and uh, hopefully he will add to that in the Euros in the summer. Um, because he's been a he's been a brilliant servant for for his country.